Hey there folks, welcome back to another video. We're going to be taking a look at my most recent rehaul. This is a rehauled Trick or Treat Studios Halloween 2 mask. Now this is the exact same mask that I rehauled about a year, almost two years ago now. Actually, yeah, about two years ago now, I started this rehaul and I rehauled it again. Now I don't have a video of that, but I will show pictures. But it's the exact same mask, repainted once more, stripped, repainted, and then rehaired again. Now the hair is the same level of quality that I used before, but this time I'm much more confident in what I'm doing, and it's just a little bit better looking. Now I'm specifically really proud of the hairline. Not so much because of its accuracy, because if you if you get into the weeds of the details with it, and you know some of the pictures really well, you'll know that there's a triangle shape right here, as well as this sort of kind of almost fraying action right here where some of the hairs got pulled forward when it was being applied for gluing. At least that's what I'm assuming. Because this would have been covered by the hairline uh, the, or the sideburn that would have went down. So this doesn't look particularly pretty. It doesn't have to. So once that hairline is removed, you can see some of those kind of more ugly layers. So that's something that's missing. Now the reason I didn't follow it 100% is because I'm not even really able to get the, the sideburns accurate because they're already glued or the glue lines, I should say. So I just kind of followed the the sculpted hairline instead. And the reason I'm so proud of it is because I think it's got that blend between that clean look, but it's not too clean. I've gotten a lot better with my uh, hair work in recent months. So that's one of my favorite aspects. Now there is some things about the hair that could be improved. There should be a little bit more of a matted look on the sides. Um, that could be just fixed with using a little bit less hair. I was trying to be conservative with the hair because I thought that um, I didn't think I was going to have enough, but I ended up maybe using a little bit too much. But I think at the end of the day it looks nice. And I think some of that reason why the Halloween 2 mask looks like it has a little less hair on the side is because there's so much pressure being applied at these temple points from uh, Dick Warlock's head that I think it just kind of... Um, hides the hair it pushes like it if you're pushing this side of the mask forward then the back is going to get pulled back so i think that's kind of if that makes any sense to anybody i think that's what's going on there because when you see nick castle wear the mask it doesn't look like it's as flat on the sides and i think some of that has to do with that as opposed to the amount of hair i could be talking out my ass but it makes sense to me it's not like the whole bunch of hair would have just fallen out i mean it's possible but I don't think so. So, but in terms of just getting it to look accurate, you could use a little less hair on the temples there. Um, but as far as the the kind of swirling action that we got going on, let's get this in view. Sort of swirling action we got. Very happy with how that's come out. It's got a little bit of mist in there to kind of bring it all together. And as far as the shading goes, or the weathering, I didn't go too heavy with it. A lot of the shadows are going to help bring out those details out. I wanted it to be a little bit lighter and even in camera here this looks darker than it does in person. And the same with the weathering or the same with the skin tone. It's not very intense. This is very much the level of skin tone that you'd see somebody put on a Halloween 1 mask. Just a little bit behind the ears, a little bit behind the neck, and a little bit under the jaw. It's not very intense at all. Because when you look at pictures of the mask after Halloween 2 is concluded filming, and you see Nick Castle, or you, excuse me, you see uh, Dick Borlach having it on the set of Friday Part 3, and then at different conventions, and then even now, the mask really doesn't have that much skin tone on it. And unless somebody tried painting it again, I don't think it ever really lost some of that white paint to show that skin tone. I think what's going on is in different lighting environments, the mask just looks a little bit more skin tone. In Halloween 2, it's got a very warm color palette, um, a very warm color grading. And if you put these masks under certain lighting and you kind of up the warmth of the picture, it'll make the skin tone look a little bit more intense. So I kind of stay away from, I've kind of decided to stay away from the skin tone as much. However, I think it adds a lot of depth to the mask. So I do like it but I don't think it's as necessarily, I don't think it's necessarily as accurate. And again, same for the weather, and I don't think it should. 
really should be that intense. Now there is some details on here that I added that do appear to be accurate, at least to the Halloween 2 reshoots. If you remember the one scene where he jumps out behind the couch or jumps out from behind wherever and he stabs that girl, that was actually a scene directed by John Carpenter where they wanted to make the movie a little bit more gory. And if you look at the behind the scenes images of that, there's actually a cut above the eye right there, which I'm gonna make a little bit bigger. And then there's a cut right here. So this has started to rot by the time they did those scenes. And there's also a cut right where this line is that I haven't added quite yet, but kind of just deciding on how I want to do it. But yeah, guys, this is the mask in this sort of environment. I'll give you a little bit of a spin around. You can see the hair on the back could be worked just a little bit more, kind of frayed out a little bit, but overall it's pretty good. This back of the mask. So yeah, maybe maybe a little bit less hair next time, but I think at the end of the day, it still looks really good. And keep in mind, this mask is really being stretched right now. There's a lot of stuffing foam at the top of the head, whereas at the bottom, it's pretty loose. So this isn't how it just sits naturally. And I can't find my Velcro, but I want to put some Velcro at the back of the neck because once you do that, then you get that do that with one hand but yeah I'm not gonna be able to do that with one hand you get a little bit of a tighter look and it's blurry anyway so but yeah guys I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the mannequin or the bust so you guys can see what it looks like like that but I figured I'd give you guys kind of an idea of how it looks like this so yeah without further ado let's move on all right guys, so here you get a chance to see it on the mannequin. It doesn't fit perfectly because the Tots mask is just so big. And also, um, when I put these coveralls down, I kind of laid them down pretty tight. So there's not a whole lot of room to play with the collar to get it kind of up around the neck. And since the mask is so big, it does look a little out of place. Um, but this mannequin torso isn't gonna be for this mask anyway. So it's all right for now. But I have been thinking about removing the coveralls and placing them on there a little bit looser. Just so it has uh, just a little bit more of a baggy look. Um, but I think for right now it looks okay. And also the collar when it's up like this is supposed to come right up underneath the jaw. At least when uh, Dick Warlock's wearing the, uh, the coveralls. I think that's accurate to Nick Castle too. But since the other masks are smaller, I can kind of get away with it. Uh, but with this one it's so big it sits so high up but I still think it looks pretty cool for pictures and stuff and, and it does look okay in person it's just not quite to scale what I would prefer I mean the original mask was a, a kid's mask you know it was tight on Nick Castle and Dick Warlock and there's a reason for that so I don't think there's any justification for why these masks are as big as they are when you want it to be accurate at least I do I don't care about uh, it being comfortable or looking good on me because I don't intend on wearing them. I want them to be as accurate as they're supposed to. Now, if their masks are bigger in the movies, now that's one thing, but as, long, as far as the original mask goes, it should be small. That's my personal opinion. And if you don't want to do that, then make it so people can buy sizes and get sizes that are a little bit smaller. And there's a, a I forget what this is called, whatever. There's a, uh, a pen holding it down. Uh, because I think with Dick Warlock's coveralls, I think there might have been another button right here. Because it seems like he's got this buttoned up, but he doesn't ever have this buttoned up. So I don't know what was going on there, but just to get that a little bit more accurate. But, uh, yeah, I think the masks should have different sizes if they don't want to give it to make them, uh, if they don't want to make them small. That's just my personal opinion. But also, you shouldn't really be able to see the neck of Dick Warlock either when he's got the coveralls up like this. So yeah, this is just sits a little bit too high. There's some things I can do to uh, move that around, but also the actual pull that this is all sitting on needs to be trimmed down. I thought I could get away with it being as tall as it is, but I can't. It needs to be trimmed down. So if that's something too, the size of the mask wouldn't really affect it as much because the whole thing would be able to sit lower. So um, 
yeah, that, that pole needs to get trimmed down, but with other masks, it uh, works a little bit better because the the pole is bent, so he can have his head tilted down, so the where it lines up on other masks is a little bit more accurate, or not accurate, but a, a little bit more appealing, so, but this still doesn't look bad in my opinion, I think that still looks alright, he just looks like he's got a big head, but yeah, so I uh, got, since I last did a video with this mannequin, I've got the whole inside hollowed out and it's all hot glued together and I'm probably going to go ahead and do some more weathering to these coveralls not too much not uh too crazy because I want it to be able to work for Halloween one and two because they're I mean for the most part they look practically the same there's just a few details that are different here and there but as far as the mask goes I think it looks pretty good I've tried uh, messing with it a little bit more to get them sides a little flatter I think today I might go ahead and use the blow dry uh the hair dryer I should say to uh See if I can mat those sides down a little bit more to get that uh, kind of thinner look on the sides. You can see the T isn't too heavy, but the shadows are really what brings the dirt and grime out on the mask. It's not too heavy in uh, brighter lighting. And you can see we got the red light going right now. Kind of got that Halloween 2 uh, parking lot vibe. And he's standing next to that exit sign or whatever it was. I'm not entirely sure, I don't remember. But you can see that that's all bundled up, uh, bunched up back there, because there's not, this is just really tight right now. So, yeah, but it is what it is. And there's plenty of stuffing in there. He's got, um, there's like a, phone, a, a ball in there that I wrapped up. A, uh, a bunch of bubble wrap is wrapped into a ball and then I put in little pieces of uh, the that kind of papery wrapping papers type stuff um, to kind of shove it in there in certain areas to get it to bulge out more towards the forehead area but uh, and also there's something in the neck to keep the ball as high as it is so there's a lot of things going on to get the mask to look like this but it's not quite perfect yet again a lot of that is just because of its height and how big the mask is, but I think if the coveralls were looser and I was able to drop the head down a little bit, it would look a lot more in proportion and the size wouldn't matter as much. But in this particular instance, the size uh, does hurt it a little bit. Um, but yeah, this still isn't done. I want to replace that base and actually get a 3D, uh, 3D printed plaque back there. And then these coveralls need some weathering, but, and also the neck. I'm not going to do weathering to the neck in the sense to make him look dirty or bloody or anything like that, but just a little realism to the skin, some washes and um, some sort of uh, freckling type stuff to give it some kind of skin texture. But as far as that goes, the coveralls are almost done, or the bust is almost done. But yeah, guys, I just wanted to give you a chance to see it on the mannequin. I think it looks pretty cool. I will show you what it looks like with some more intense lighting on it, I suppose. I can do this with one hand. I don't know what that was, but you guys can get a chance to see that the lighting, or the shading, I should say, isn't really that intense. I do have the actual exposure of the camera drop down too, so that's something to keep in mind. But there it is, a little bit more of a balanced lighting. I can also throw this on. That didn't do anything, but whatever. So yeah, guys, I think the hair came out pretty well uh, on this guy. I think the shading and the skin tones and all that are all pretty much where I'd like them to be. There's definitely some improvements to be made still, but as far as a Todd's mask, I haven't seen a whole lot of rehauls for the Halloween 2 mask that I really like. So I've never been too keen on this mask. Uh, but after this attempt here, I think it's definitely got some good qualities to it. It's just not quite there. It's got too much of the Dick Warlock stretch in some areas and not enough in others. Like, I think the nose is way too wide compared to how the eyes look just normally sitting there. So when you stuff the rest of the mask to give it that proper Warlock stretch, at least... Because there's different, there's different versions of the Warlock stretch. There's different intensities to it. And say if you wanted to give him the look where he's got this going on where the collar's tight up against the neck 
and the neck is, uh, the mask neck is tight, he's got the, that's when his head looks the most round, and the nose is too, um, too wide for that to begin with, and the eyes are too squinty, so you can't really get them as stretched out as they should. So there's some things that just don't really balance out right to give it that one-to-one -one look. It's got like a mixture of things going on, and I think that's probably down to them sculpting the mask, but using multiple different references for it. So, you know, but it is what it is. I still think it's got some nice qualities to it, and it does look good at the end of the day. If you guys agree and you like this video, maybe you should hit the like button, subscribe, and maybe hit that notification bell. If you decide to do that, it would be greatly appreciated. And, uh, of course, until next time, true believers.